afternoon all. Well, sorry, rather morning, <laughs> not afternoon yet. Yesterday was quite exciting. I helped uh, Neville Chan, who's uh, here. He's now on Facebook. I helped him set up uh, Drunken Nights on Facebook, and we've actually got now Facebook.com slash Drunken Nights. So um, there's a wall uh, where you can write comments. Uh, please become a fan. So even just yesterday, from yesterday, 37 people already uh, have liked uh, this, so that will get the word out that Drunken Nights is now on Facebook. So, um, and there's there's stuff which has already been, uh, we managed to make use of uh, docs.com. So Neville's been uploading some documents. Uh, so you can just click in and see like documents. Uh, so this is uh, one document, Stuart Conquest um, details about uh, simultaneous display on uh, Thursday, Thursday 9th of June. So um, there's good stuff already. Uh, let's close that. Uh, there's there's details of um, uh, the what's what's this? We'll have a look at this document. Um, this this was the uh, classic recent match uh, results against uh, the mighty Wood Green, um, and I'd like to annotate actually this particular game as part of this video so add a bit more spice to this video so this was one of the games where drunken knight scored against a team which had 10 gms in it so if ever your club plays 12 ball matches and has to play um uh 10 gms then you know uh, you've got a, a tough challenge <laughs> ahead but anyway uh so that is one key game where david mosvich uh, who I've played before in the past actually when he was a kid at the Barnet Congress um, I managed to take a game off him uh, when when I was still able to <laughs> and um, anyway let's see his his win against David Bursez but um, just before I do I'll just quickly show you so there's photos uh, section info section so Drunken Knights being at the Plough Pub next to the British Museum there's a club members link here for the ECF uh, site um, and details of, of location and um, set the mission up uh, temp uh, provisioning uh, so I'm a kind of admin with Neville um, <clears throat> on this Facebook page and it's interesting you know a, a, f a few uh, chess clubs have set up Facebook pages and maybe it's a good way you know for club promotion uh, you know if your chess club doesn't have a website uh, ch check out the pages on um, on Facebook a page in inverted commas it's a concept uh, so you can set up pages um, so like it's in this this section here ads and pages so that's that's interesting if you want to check that out um, okay okay let's let's annotate that game which uh, I mentioned then which um, isn't that historic match okay David Moskovic playing white against a grand master opponent David Burr says so e4 an aggressive first move e6 from his grand master opponent now we have d4 d5 after e5 something uh, my good friend Paul Georgiou might have played in his youth actually b6 rather cheekily wanting to get rid of the light squared bishop straight away not playing more mainline stuff like c5 so a bit of a cheeky move c3 not being too concerned about bishop um pardon me pardon me c3 is totally against bishop a6 <laughs> that's about the worst thing i could have said i just said it <laughs> is concerned about bishop a6 because now if bishop a6 that would be a huge blunder because it takes and queen a4 check so will the grandmaster fall in for this no <laughs> oh dear wake up so queen d7 now okay so queen d7 bishop a6 is again on because on d7 it's stopping the queen a4 check right let's move on to more cheap stuff in this game so h4 <laughs> caveman attack or is it is it just is it positional trying to like weaken the dark squares you know maybe provoke g6 from black try and get into these dark squares c5 and now h5 blacks obviously afraid of h6 now as a threat and plays h6 to stop that 
bishop f4 overprotecting e5 but is the bishop kind of hemmed in by its own pawn there knight e7 well at least the bishop can't be harassed through knight g6 because of the benefit of that pawn being on h5 so there's a slight cramp on black's uh, king side d takes c5 b takes c5 now knight f3 keeping the overprotection up so why it's got a solid grip on e5 uh, Black's central control seems quite good though. Now Black actually leashes, unleashes g5. So he gets rid of White's pawn on h5 now because Ampersant is chosen. Knight takes g6, Bishop g3. So we have an interesting dynamic. Black can use the g5 for potential pressure on White's king side. But the Bishop on g3 is shielding White's king if White's going to castle king side, keeping up the overprotection, the bind of that e5 pawn as well. But Bishop a6 now, and Black's getting rid of his problem piece. White takes, and now Knight bd2. So does Black stand a little bit better? In fact, both his rooks have blasting files now, b file and g file to work with in this game. So black has a very dynamic position with good central control and it would seem that maybe this bishop's a bit blocked in by its own pawn. So had David been kind of outplayed, has he given too much dynamism to black? This is the key question here. Bishop e7, queen e2, keeping up the overprotection theme. Also, of course, hitting the knight <laughs> is, is, a, is another thing which has to be dealt with here. And how is it dealt with effectively? Can the knight not just retreat, for example, knight c7? Well, actually, um, David Burr says, Grandmaster opponent played queen b7, protection knight, and also putting pressure on b2. Provoking, actually, maybe a little bit of a weakness, b3. Now rook d8, not actually using that b file, or there's nothing, it would be too slow to try and make use of it, you know, like this. Instead, d4 and this queen coming down to g2 with pressure is preferred by black a3 and in fact now the knight reroutes knight b8 but what is white's plan with a3 it's to try and actually put more pressure on the dark squares so b4 now after knight d7 we see a very interesting move now actually no bog standard castling well, black's not in any rush to castle either. We see actually the move knight h4. So this is afforded by white's overprotection of e5, in fact, that um, you can try and get rid of these two guys for these two guys. But um, black lets white do the capturing. He plays just rook g8. After knight g6, rook g6, now David commits to castling. So what is the situation here? Has he given black an easy time? There's no problem bishop. This bishop's kind of compatible with the pawn chain on the light squares here. There's a g-file. There's potential coordination with the queen. It's a little bit dangerous. King f8. Still, the overprotection continues. Knight f3. After king g8, again, the use of h4 is made here for knight h4. Now, this time, black really doesn't I guess want to give up that dark square bishop because this bishop could be potentially useful on these dark squares. Uh, so actually rook g7. Is the knight actually misplaced on h4 though? Well, here's the thing. Actually knight h4 means the queen's now free to attack with queen h5 and that's made use of. So on the attack now, queen h5. So how does black counter this? He plays actually d4. So there's potentially a problematic threats now bishop h4 and queen g2 if white's not careful in this position it's not a problem of course uh, the queen is also protecting h4 as well as attacking h6 david actually uh, david moscovich plays c takes d4 they're both davids i was to qualify that c takes d4 now actually he's brave to play queen takes h6 now so he doesn't mind uh, potentially the bishop being actually decoyed because also the queen was actually protecting e5 from there. So there's a potential combination of bishop h4, queen h4, knight e5. But the thing is, on h4 it's actually hitting the rook. So tactically this is working out okay. The rook will be in prey after bishop h4. 
So actually knight b6, instead black is uh, doing something nasty with this knight now. And maybe this pawn is also dangerous. So he's keeping this coordination going on white's king and trying to also introduce other elements to the mix. So knight f3, d3, this, this pawn is running through down, down the center. Rook f d1. Now knight a4, is this going to be really dangerous? Knight c3 to e2, check. More worries for white. Rook a c1. And now black strikes at white's queen side with a5. Now when I was checking this with an engine actually yesterday, there's an idea for white that actually this knight's a bit vulnerable. And b takes a5 with the idea of rook c4 coming in like this potentially is dangerous if black's going like, to take on a3 especially. Um, let's not get into the masses of variations. Let's just see what happened here though. Queen e3. And now this is documented I believe as a blunder. Black should have uh, taken on, on, on b4. And apparently David's reaction was a bit in horror after he had played this move. Not realising you know, that he should have just taken first on b2. I think he spent a few minutes um, in disgust at himself, you know, not, not taking on b4 first. Because this move now allows David uh, to win material. All he does is actually rook d2. So he's defending against you know, knight d1, chasing the knight back and winning d3 now. So he's actually in effect forking b2 and d3. So this is starting to get a bit more cheerful for white. Knight a4, he wins the d3 pawn, which might have been a threat. Rook takes d3, queen takes d3, and now black is forced, if he wants to regain material, um, to take on b4. Uh, but there's, I think there's a big problem um, here though. a takes b4, a takes b4. The question is, why didn't black in this position um, immediately take on b4? Well, if queen takes b4, the weakness of the last move, rook c8 check, the queen wouldn't be guarding c8. Uh, so this might actually be completely uh, disastrous, this position. Let's just engine check this actually. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to add the kibitzer now. Um, queen takes b4. Yeah, check. In this position, there's a crunching move, which actually isn't completely obvious. I wonder if you guys can guess it. The crunching move, which gives white a huge advantage is actually bishop f4, believe it or not. Um, and if, if rook, if for example, if queen takes f4, then this is a mating two with rook takes f8, queen d8. And how does black actually parry bishop h6? So say knight b6, rook b8, rook g6. Now there's queen d8, so th there's big frets here. Um, queen a3, queen, bishop g5. So there's, there's there's dark square issues around black's position, uh, which mean like something like queen e7 now is is getting to be winning material actually, winning the bishop. So that's a very interesting idea. Bishop f4, computer move. Bishop f4 here. There's there's also actually. Um, Bishop h4 as an alternative. So the queen, it's obviously dangerous for the queen to take on b4 because of that bishop, because of that rook c8 check. Um, and what about bishop takes b4? Well, the weakness of the last move there is the d8 square. So actually here, queen d8 check. And now it's even more clear cut maybe. Rook c8 is pretty strong. Uh, the check, after the check, black's, black would be in dire trouble. Um, we get this position, and now again, uh, not not bishop f4 though, because the queen takes f4 is check, and there's nothing protecting the bishop, but bishop h4 again, and we see this again, this pattern that actually queen e7 or bishop e7 is really dangerous here. Uh, so this this is a temporary uh, reprieve to attack the rook. It's an engine line. Oh, there's a check though in this line, but again in this situation, uh, white is really about to build pressure on that dark square bishop and apparently this this now with knight g1 this is really troublesome now black blacks on the brink of being totally uh, busted here in fact he's losing material again like rook takes b6 
Okay, so both those moves um, are kind of technically losing. So the GM actually, um, actually, let's close the engine now, actually played in this position rook g4. So he didn't want to give these entry points to David Moscovich. So uh, bishop h4. Aha! Nice trying to get onto d8 because bishop h4, you know, knight h4, rook h4, there's rook, there's queen d8, you know, will be winning that rook. So knight b2, and now we see queen c3, so invading anyway on c8. Or is it just inviting just um, exchanges? Well, actually, bishop takes h4, knight takes h4. And here, not uh, rook takes h4. Let's see, actually, is rook takes h4? There's a big problem, actually, just queen g3 check. Queen g3 check would just win the exchange. So um, queen takes b4. So here, white's just a pawn up, but check queen e8. Very dangerous. The king's safety is like a bit shot to pieces here. So f7 needs to be guarded. White black hasn't got enough time uh, for rook takes h4. We'll be getting um, mated or something, or just losing the rook somehow. Okay, so rook g7 was played to defend f7, but rook c8, and white's king is slightly uh, safer than black's. Queen h4 check and winning the queen. So instead, queen check here. Taking a pawn with check seems very dangerous, but after g3, this knight's helping in the attack. This knight's a bit distant from things, so there's an immediate threat of queen h8 mating, which needs to be parried. So rook g4, exposing the defence on h8, but uh, the f7 pawn is dropping. Rook g7, again white is a pawn up. Queen e8, again now the threat of mate, so again it has to be parried. Knight f3, because also there's a threat here of rook takes h4, if white's not careful. Knight f3 hitting the queen. And also it would be nice to be able to play queen h5 trying to win the rook. So queen g7. Now here, um, queen h5 looks actually quite crushing, because queen h6, rook c7. But there's another move played instead. And th that's actually kind of interesting, actually. I wonder if there was... Uh, a time scramble here. I, I assume it was just the time scramble. Because actually, let, let's just engine check this. It looks to me Queen h5 is actually a mate in 5 because of Queen h6, uh, Rook c7 check. But th this other move, Queen d8, has some merits to it. It's still pretty crushing according to the engines. Uh, so basically, it's threatening, I believe, Rook c7, just skewing the Queen against the King. And it's very difficult to defend uh, this position. Let's see if, for example, king h6, there will still be rook c7. This is really uh, kind of nasty now, because uh, you want to allow the queen like for h8, and that'll be mating. So really, th this is quite crushing, uh, this position. Um, it's like plus six anyway, but uh, th so even though a mate in five was missed with queen h5, it doesn't really matter. Queen d8, lovely move anyway. Rook c4 was played, which has, uh, the advantage of stopping rook c7, but the disadvantage that uh, white's just picking up a knight here. Just plays rook takes c4 and check, just picking up the knight. So with this move, um, David's grandmaster opponent resigned. Good stuff. So that was uh, something to take heart with, that fantastic win. Um, the underdog winning. So uh, let's have a look in overview and summary. So um, b6, c3 stopping actually bishop a6 because of the uh, queen a4. Queen d7 renewing the idea that black wants to play bishop a6. Now we see h4 and there's a whole dark square strategy here. I'm trying to provoke weaknesses on the dark squares, which kind of worked out very well for white in this game. And the overprotection is another aspect. Although black does have some dynamic trump cards, you know, the B and G files to blast rooks down, and the, the central, like, D pawn, 
so it looked kind of dangerous and um, it seems the trump cards were kind of ruined by black through just one major inaccuracy losing the, in fact the d pawn uh, because of this knight b2 move which allowed rook d2 just the d once the d pawn was lost uh, black couldn't even regain uh, the pawn easily without allowing an entry on either c8 or d8 which would be very dangerous as the variation showed so in fact black started uh, to have severe difficulties now especially with his dark squares around his king being echoed now with bishop um, h4 nice little move so if takes 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 queen d8 so there was knight b2 and now queen c3 invading anyway via c8 forcibly and um, there's there's neat little ideas of queen g3 as well after bishop h4 knight h4 the rook can't take on h4 so black's king has has got serious issues here echoing in in many variations so queen takes b4 check so has black regained material well the the white pieces are collecting around the king now uh, very very dangerous already so rook g7 rook c8 threatening immediate like termination with queen h8 but uh check check and now defense and also a threat of rook h4 however no need to panic pick up the f7 pawn again re renew the mate in one threat again defending and now knight f3 the knight uh attacking the queen asking the queen where it's going to go there's nasty threats now queen h5 the principal one which isn't used here instead queen d8 with with another vicious threat of rook c7 skewing the queen so white's king is just just safe here because of this f2 pawn protecting g3 and um queen h6 check i mean is just harmless just just king g2 so it's black's king that's really exposed after all this such a backfire because some very nice moves from white to weaken and weaken uh the black king so now finally just just clear cut win of a piece so a very fine win Hope you enjoyed that and please check out uh, facebook.com slash drunken nights for their new uh basically in effect their new website is, is based on facebook okay thanks very much